All right, so we're going to start off with our standing meditation. Now, I want to say this last class, we ha I had explained trying to feel the heat exchange between the hands while sitting down. That's the same concept you want to apply standing. But the difference is when you're sitting, things orbit differently. You want to try and visualize the energy coming up from the ground and into your hands. And begin. Well, let's be a little bit more formal. Feet together, right fist, left palm, show courtesy. And now let's begin. Move on to the Qigong, breathe in and out. Breathe in out. Squat down low on the next one. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. Out. In. And out. And the closing. Breathe in. And out. Very good, next stretch. Up. And down. Down. 
right side. Switch. Switch. And switch. Neck rotations. Other way. And hands up. Wrist rotations in. Out. And shoulder rotation forward. Back. And now we're going to do the waving hands. Remember to breathe in as the hands go up, breathe out as the hands go back. You want to feel the blood rushing to your fingertips. And go high. Now, same concept, but instead of going up and down, Go side to side. You still want to feel the blood rushing to your fingertips, breathing in and breathing out. All right, very good. Now we're going to go on to slapping the kidneys. Remember with this one, you want to stay very relaxed. And all you're really doing is guiding your hands to the target. Other than that, your body's just, your body turning side to side is actually what's moving your hands. Chest for the heart and love. And center for the digestive organs. And on the hips, hips ro hip rotations.
other direction. And separate the feet. Grab the ball waist turning. Inhale as you go up. Exhale as you go down. Remember to keep the eyes focused on the imaginary ball. And breathe in. Out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Out. And other direction. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Out. And last one. Breathe in. And out. And shake it out. Feet together. Knee rotation. Other direction. Separate the feet. Knee rotations in. Other way, outward circles. And anchor rotations. Remember, you can either keep the foot up or rotate this way. Or you can be on your toe and circle this way. Other way. And switch legs. And other way. And check it out. Slap the left side. Lower back. Stomach washing. Remember you're pressing in with your fingers and pushing your fingers out by tensing up the abdominal muscles.
and top of the head. And one with the hands. Massage the face, forehead. Eyes. Nose. Mouth. And neck. Thyroid gland. Remember, flack the teeth and tense the muscles in the neck. Kidneys, cover the ears, and tap the base of your skull with the index finger. And shake it up. Okay, so, Given that the recordings haven't been uploaded, I don't necessarily feel like we should move on in the form. So once we get through the eight brocades and the meditation, there's another type of Qigong that I'm not allowed to teach the entire thing, but I will, I wanna teach you guys the opening. It's the opening in and of itself is a valid Qigong exercise. And it's very good for strengthening and amping up your energy for the day but we'll get to that after we get through the eight brocades. It's a little complex and a little intense. So it's gonna take a bit to explain it. Now we're gonna go over the form, but instead of teaching you new form movements, I wanna teach you the Qigong exercise. Um, okay. Number one, holding up the sky for the triple burner. And breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. Breathe in.
out, breathe in. And out. All right. Now, as we continue with the exercises, try to, we're going to try and do two things. First thing is try to keep a meditative mindset. The eight brocades is what could be classified as a soft style Qigong. So it's very, it should be very relaxing. Now, beyond that, I want you to try and feel, I guess you could say the stretch that comes with each exercise, like we're moving on to number two. A lot of times people stop here, which is cool. You know, you get the movement, but you want to overdo it a little bit so that you can feel this open up. And you should feel all of this opening up and stretching. And then as you come back, you feel it compressing. Now, the only exercise this kind of doesn't apply for is, I want to say four, because four, you're just turning. But even with three, which I'll re-explain when we get to it, but there's a compression on one side and a stretch on the other side. Try and feel that. If you can feel that, it'll give you a good indicator that you're on the right track. All right, number two. Pulling the bow and shooting the arrow. Breathe in. Out. 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 And the closing. Breathe in. And out. And shake it out. Now, number three, you don't want to overdo this, but the hand that goes up, all this should be stretching. There is, it's not just straight up, there is a little bit of a bend. Same thing with the back arm. So if I'm here, this arm is going back, along with this, the top hand, and this is also tucked in close. Not necessarily touching your body, but this is compressed a little bit as this one is stretching. So that same concept of expanding and contracting, except you're doing it at the same time, as opposed to it being two separate actions, one side is contracted, one side is expanded, one side is tight, one side is stretched. And this one is Pressing up and down for digestion. Well, for the stomach, so it's for digestion, but for the stomach and the spleen. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in.
and out. Breathe in. And out. In. Out. Last one. Breathe in. And out. And the closing. Breathe in. And out. Now number four. Again, this one, it's, I guess you could say that the contraction happens as you turn because it naturally modifies the positioning of your muscles, but there's not really a expand or contract. There's just, turn, I guess, twist and untwist, which could, is arguably the same thing. But I digress. Number four, looking back to rid fear and anxiety. Breathe in. And out. Open the eyes wide as you look back. And relax them as you breathe in. And come forward. And breathe out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Out. In. And out. And the closing. Breathe in. Now number five. So this one is kind of the same story as number four. It's a twist and untwist. Now, again, you don't want to overdo it. But so there's a difference between just doing a circle this way and this way. So as opposed to just keeping your torso forward the whole time, you want to turn it a little bit and then go down and then you untwist straight out. Then you come up, twist it a little bit, and come back to center. I might have overdone it a little bit, but that's fine just to get the concept going. All right. Wagging the tail for the heart and the pericardium. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. And out. And shake it out. Number six. 
Okay. So with this one, as you go down, this is a stretch, not just for your legs, but for your lower back as well. Now, as you come up, this is a stretch and a compression. So same thing with this movement. This is being compressed. This is being stretched. Now, as you come up, the back is being tensed as this is being stretched. And also, the back is straight. The shoulders are back. So your shoulder blades become closer together, as opposed to here where they're kind of rounded out. When you come up here, when the shoulders go back, that kind of comes closer together. So the back is stretched first and the stomach is compressed. Then as you go back, stomach is stretched, back is compressed. Or tense, whatever word you want to use. All right, number six, jolting back for the immune system. And breathe in and out. And breathe in and out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in and out. And the closing, breathe in and out. Number seven, staring at the fist with the angry eyes. So remember, there are two things going on. So starting with the hands, as the hands come in, they're relaxed. As you go out, they, you tense up the muscles in the arm and stare at the fist, open the eyes wide. Now, with regard to your torso, as you come in, what happens? This opens up. So here, it's tight, particularly because of this arm. Then as you come in, you pull your arms back, which opens up the chest. And then you go back out again. So, let's do it. And breathe in. And out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. And the closing. Breathe in. And out.
Very good. Last one. Straight, um, raising the heels to bring the energy to the crown. So, contract, extend. And now, so, like when we're doing the meditation, sitting or standing, you want to feel the heat exchange between the hands. Yes. Now, when you're doing this one, try to feel the energy rising up. That same sort of tingle or heat sensation you might have felt during that meditation is what you want to try and feel inside. Now, I don't necessarily like to plant seeds and then you're like, oh, I feel a little something and it might be nothing. You might be, might be body heat. It might be something else. It might not be a tingle. It might not be heat. I've known people that say, okay, when they do their Tai Chi, when they do energy work, they feel cold. Everybody's body is different, which means everybody's energetic flow is different. So you have to kind of feel it out for you. But you should feel a little something. At the very least, you should at least feel relaxed. All right. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. In. And all right, cool. Now, I want to kind of reiterate something. I know I said I don't like to plant seeds. There's a reason I don't like to plant the seeds as to what a person should feel. And that's just because once it's planted, which I kind of already messed up and planted the seed anyway, you're going to look for that. And a lot of times it's kind of like, um, I don't know what the word is, like a sort of, like it's, you're kind of going to use that as affirmation. So you're going to feel a little something and say, oh, okay, this is it. And it might not that I don't know how else to explain it because I can't explain to you what you're going to feel. I can explain to you what I feel because I've done it for so long. I know what I feel, but given that I've heard so many variances from so many different people, I don't want to say, Oh, you're going to feel heat and you might not, which I kind of, as I said, I already kind of screwed up and planted that seed, but it's fine. It'll give you at least the concepts to go with. So we're going to do, we're going to go straight into the Tai Chi form. And I want you to try and feel that little something. And for the sake of, this could confuse you further, but you want to feel the flow of energy. I don't want to say feel heat or feel tingly or feel cold or feel whatever, because it's your energy. I can tell you, I, I have no way of knowing what your energy is going to feel like. So as you go through the form, you want to try and visualize your energy, which is stored here to about a few inches below the belly button traveling throughout your body primarily through the legs and through the hands so we're going to jump right into 24 we're going to go over it a couple times and then i want to go into the qigong now the first time you do it we're just going to go through it i'm not going to monologue so try to turn the form into a sort of meditative experience which is what tai chi is mainly used for these days that and the health benefits. And begin.
I want to say that's where we left off. All right. Okay. So, I want to say the other group, we stopped with the wave hands like clouds. So, what I want to do is take it from the grab the ball, grasp for its tail and all that, all the way through the single whip, just as a review. So now I'll talk over it, but we're not gonna go from the top because that's gonna take like a million years. So we're gonna go from there. Uh, we're skipping that side, we go straight into the opposite side. So more than anything, you wanna remember when you step, not to fall which I tend to do sometimes because I'm not used, <laughs> you'd think I'd be used to it by now, but I'm not used to operating with such a small space, so I'll, ca I'll fall when I step. And what I mean by fall is not like, you know, fall, ah, I fall and I can't get up, but as opposed to putting your foot down and shifting, you're just putting your foot down. So you have to have that control to put the foot down, well, the heel, the rest of your foot, and then shift. Now from here, it's really just shifting your weight back and forth. And the push happens with this leg, believe it or not. It's not just shifting this knee forward. 
you're pushing off the ground with this back leg. That's going to take a little bit to get conceptually, but this foot propels you forward, the back foot. Same story here. You shift the weight back. Then as you shift forward, this back foot is pushing you forward. Now we get into the wave hands like clouds. So right from here, you switch the hand position. And it is gradual, it's not as automatic, but as you're shifting, the hands adjust, you turn. The weight should be shifted now to the back, which is the left side. Change the hands, and you're gonna shift and turn your waist. Hook up top, palm turns upward. Okay, you step out. Remember the same story. You don't want to just fall. Put the foot down. Step and shift. Now from here, left goes down, and the right hand is just going to come in and turn. And you repeat. Change the hands turn now a lot of times the order gets a little iffy and it's kind of hard for me to explain it because it over time it all kind of just becomes one movement so okay for the sake of simplicity it's going to be hands Legs, well, torso, then legs. So now as you're turning your torso, your legs are moving at the same time. But you could say that the torso initiates the action. Hook up top. And, oh, I just did a repeat. That's fine. So turn. Change the hands. Turn the waist. And as you're turning, the foot goes. The Rather, the shifting of the weight. Now, once you're here, you move the foot. So, hands, waists, foot. Hands, waists, foot. Hands, waist, foot. Hands, waist, foot. Now, I wanna say that's the third time now, once you reach the third time, turn again. But now when you step out, you take a big step here. And you change the hands and turn. Now you're just shifting the weight from side to side. Hook up top. And single whip. Now from here, pat the horse back. So in the beginning, we have the strum the loop, the footwork there, you stay in place. You're here, bop. Now for pat the horse back, you move forward. So this back leg is gonna replace the front leg. Bop. And then, somehow that's patting a horse's back. Now, the hands intersect. You turn one way, turn the other way. Now, when you turn the other way, the foot starts to turn as well. Now, you shift forward. Now, the weight should be on the left leg. Now, you rise up and kick. Now, you put the foot down. The hands draw back. Strike the ears. Now, shifting back, turning. This movement is called flashback. Then you rise up. The weight should be on the right. And you kick. Now you come forward. The right hand comes down to go back and up. And that's happening as you're shifting the weight. So, where were we? Okay, 
Um, honestly, it depends on what type of day I'm having. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just kick, and my right hand goes that way. Other times, if my hand retracts, my hand just goes straight back. I learned from two different people, so, and not to mention, I might have subconsciously adjusted something. Just pick your favorite. Um, it doesn't inherently matter for this movement. Like I said, there's a million variations of this form. You can go up and back, or you can go straight down and back, and then go under. So, kick. And just because I think this one is easier because it's just one way, go down. And as you sink, left hand is sinking down with you. And it comes to right in front. Now, as you're here, this hand keeps going. And this hand shifts downward. And in a way, they kind of switch positions. Because as this one is up, this one is down, then they change roles. Now this one is up, and this one is down in the back. So from there, shift back. I have to slide so much, I'm just making space. Turn. Now, left hand comes down, right hand spears up. This way. Now you go back into the snake creeps down, put the foot down, adjust the back leg, bring the hand back, and snake down, and rise up. Now, as I mentioned before, it may be difficult for a lot of you to get into this position. Now, while I recommend you gradually try to get there for starters you can just do this which is the same shifting of the weight that happens here right before the last single whip so if anyone has questions on the form now is the time to chime in before we move on to the qigong all right so what style of Qigong am I teaching you now? So, Hua Shan Pai Qigong, that's what this is called. So, we teach this at our Kung Fu school and it's very, A, it's very expensive, but B, it's also very rigorous for a Qigong exercise. Qigong, when you think about it, you think of you know the soft actions, the gentle breathing. The Hua Shan Pai is not at all that. It is what would be classified as a hard style Qigong. Now, honestly, if you don't even feel inclined to learn it right now and you just want to see it, that's probably a good idea. And then as the video is uploaded, you'll have that reference to learn it. And we can use that in class. But, so that same type of visualizing is partly required for this. So just to go over the movement without the breath, and this is the opening for the exercise. I'm not permitted to teach the exercises and I'm kind of just taking it upon myself to introduce you guys to the opening. So the opening, you kind of want to gather the energy up and bring this to about chest height or um, yeah. And then Kind of like Superman when he's taking off his, his shirt. You open up and the elbows are back and you lean back a little bit. Now from here, bend down, bring the hands forward this way. And then you're, you're literally going to punch down and bounce. The same type of bounce we do with the waving hands. And that's the exercise. Because right from here, you repeat. Now, normally, when I do this Qigong, it's 
the first thing that I do before I start my Kung Fu training because it builds the energy. Now, generally, you should probably do this first as opposed to doing all the Tai Chi stuff. Why? Because all the Tai Chi, all the Qigong we just did, that's going to relax your body. It's going to put you at a state of ease. Now, this is counterintuitive to that. So that's going to do the opposite. It's going to build you up. So you do that first, and then it's fine to go into the Tai Chi and relax because you've, you're already built up. Now it's time to relax. You don't want to do the other way around. Not so good for your health. So that's why I say maybe just watch now, and then when the video is uploaded or maybe next class I'll go over it again. So let's go through the movement one more time. So rise up. You want to bring this to about like your nipple height. Then open up the chest. Expand, stretch back. Then come down and punch down and give it a bounce like that. So one more time. Up. Back. Down. And punch. Now with the breathing. So it's breathing in, breathing in. Now when you're here, you're not going to do any breathing. You're going to compress your abdominal muscles and hold your breath. Then as you punch down, you let it out. Now, as I said, this isn't a soft movement. It's actually a very aggressive movement. Same thing with the breath. So exercise caution when practicing this because it's very intense. It's not just it should be done fast. And then you repeat. Now, you can slow that down a little bit. You don't have to go that fast. And remember, it's not a soft Qigong. So this is a strong movement. When I say punch down, you want to actually punch down. Don't lock your elbow, but punch down. Um, yeah. So let's run through that one more time, just in detail. And again, if you don't feel comfortable practicing it, if you want to wait a little bit, get a little further explanation, perfectly fine. At least this is a seed I don't mind planting. <laughs> so this is how I usually start a little hunched over so I can feel like I'm bringing the energy up as I breathe in. Then I breathe in again as I open and stretch. Then I come down, the air is still in my lungs, and I compress my abdominal muscles consciously, tensing them up. Then I punch down and exhale through the nose. So all this, the breathing is through the nose. And then to close it, let's say you did three or six, you breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then after you've done a couple of these, you don't want to do more than 12. And you always want to do these in sets of three. After you do a couple of those, walk around a little bit, let the heart rate settle, let the energy settle, and then you can move on with the rest of your training. So that's kind of the seat that I want to plan. I know time is probably already been. That is incorporate some of that into our class already. The massaging the face, the stomach, washing the thyroid, the kidney. All that is part of the Hua Shan Pai Chi Gong. The strip pieces of exercises. It's a series of 108 exercises. We do teach this at the school, and generally, it's open to the public. So if this Kung Fu school has a seminar, I'll keep you guys posted if you're interested in learning it. Now, with regard to coronavirus, the school is... Open, I know, Viga, Viga, you've gone or go. I don't know if you've been back since. I don't know how they communicated this because they sent me an email way back when, but they didn't pan out. So, yeah, but 
exercise costs for me, you guys go out. Personally, I'm not going back until I feel comfortable. I live with my grandma, and I don't want to get that Rona. I mean, I don't want to give it to her because, you know, I might be fine, but she might not. She has a lot of pre-existing health issues, so going out and all that's iffy for me. And I'm sure it's the case for many of you. So just exercise caution, be safe, and practice. The practice is definitely good, especially given that this virus is considered to, well, not considered, it's been proven to affect your ability to breathe. So all this excessive breathing and practicing definitely gives you a fighting chance, definitely makes you stronger and more capable of beating something like this. So practice, build up your immunity, build up your strength, and yeah, just be safe, be cautious, and follow the rules. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Be together. Right fist, the left palm, show courtesy. I hope to see you all on Tuesday. I hope to see more of you guys on next Tuesday. And yeah, have fun, practice. Thank you.